I from from Quebec City. My team is uh, Chanel Nordic. We have a 35 Alaskan pointer dog on an old farm near Quebec City. I think it's a good mix for running fast and uh, strong dog, happy dog, friendly dog and happy dog. It's fun. And how long have you been a musher for? Oh, the last 40 years. Nice. I start kid, my father have dog in saint emile Town, near, very close to Quebec City, and a growing with sl sledding dog. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how long have you been mushing for and uh, the tradition of New England sled mushing in myopia? Uh, we've been mushing for 40 years. Uh, the tradition is they've been a race back here in the 60, 1960s. Uh, last year was the first year they restarted the race. Uh, again, this is the second one, so uh, they've improved the trail and it's a real good, uh, real good race today. And uh, how long have you been racing for? Uh, my whole life. I was here at Myopia in the 60s, back when we used to race, um, with my parents. And uh, tell me a little bit of the New England sled dog racing. You know, I, I've heard an interview that you were talking about that and over the tradition. And how does myopia hold up to the standard of what traditional races and what we're doing today? Well, this is this is a throwback to the old days. We used to race in Massachusetts quite a bit each season. Uh, it seemed like we had more snow this far south back then. And for a lot of years, we just stopped racing down here because there wasn't a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. This really feels to me like the race I remember when I was a kid you know, coming down here. So it's nice to see snow come back and the crowds and the enthusiasm for our sport right here in, uh, in this part of Massachusetts. It's great. What type of dogs do you race again? We're running uh, German short haired pointers and some of them are mixed with a little bit of husky, but it's mostly German short hair pointer. And what are different about these type of dogs uh, versus uh, the Siberian mm -hmm. or the Alaskan? Well, I grew up racing Siberians when I was a kid. That's, that was the predominant breed. And that, that pretty much dominated the New England Sled Dog Club at the time. Um, as I've grown older, uh, you see more of these hybrids. And what they do is they allow the dogs to be able to run at higher temperatures at these faster speeds that we're doing now than we were 30 or 40 years ago. And it's become a year-round sport for us. We actually compete in dry land racing in September right through May. And then really the only hot months, June, July, and August, are the only year, uh, times of the year that we're not racing. So having the short hair breeds allows us to race more during the year. Yesterday's and today's event. And yes, it, it was absolutely incredible to have these kind of snow conditions um, that are just tremendously different from last year. Though, uh, you know, last year we did pull off the one day with de deteriorating conditions on Saturday with the 43 degree weather. Here yesterday morning was about three to five below zero. 20 to 24 inches of snowpack, and then today being milder, it's wonderful here Sunday morning. So uh, now we're just having the mushers meeting, and then we should be getting ready to head out around 9:30, quarter to 10, with the six. Uh, 1924, that club was established, incorporated, and uh, up in Wanna Lancet, New Hampshire, at the uh, Chinook Kennels, and. Um, those dogs were, were bred to go down to the South Pole with Admiral Byrd. And Admiral Byrd uh, was the first man ever to fly to the South Pole and back. And those dogs are what, what made that possible. And it was actually my friend, Norman Vaughn, who was Byrd's lead dog driver on the 1928 expedition to the South Pole. Uh, Vaughn was the one that uh, set out the food depots and the emergency provisions in case Byrd were to make an emergency landing flying from their base, Little America, to the South Pole and back. So anyway, be, uh, that's an historical documented history of what so happened. Now to what the has team. happened in 1967, Norman Vaughn, co coming from this area, established a race at Myopia in, in 67. And uh, he ran this race. And uh, then his trail actually caught went across the railroad tracks and the Maine to Boston Railroad didn't want to see that happen. They didn't have the manpower to have flagmen there. So he 
basically did away with the races after that one shot. We caught wind of this, we ran the races last year, and now we're trying to make it an annual event here to show our appreciation for the open space that we have here. We've been rushing five years, and our team's, I guess, a little different from most of the teams here as we're a traditional Siberian team. And we're not running a Hound Dog or Alaskans, or we're traditional Siberian all the way. How long have you been rushing for? Five years. And what brings you all the way here to myopia and keeping the tradition of the New England? The snow. <laughs> the snow. <laughs> No, Can you tell a, me about the conditions? They, it was great trail, great race, put on great, everything was fine. It was it was really nice up here. So we're, we're excited. Everybody should be traveling up here for this next year. It's well run, well organized. Thank you. All right, what's your name? And Keith long? Breyer from Moulton Burl, New Hampshire. And how long have you been mushing? All my life. I've been raised in a kennel of sled dogs since I was a baby. And... Um, what makes myopia today special? Uh, uh. Well, we got good snow, got a great crowd, great weather. Thought we'd been 33 years since we've been in Massachusetts to race, so we thought we'd come back and see what it was like again. Nice. And, uh, and uh, what's it take to be a good musher? A lot of time and a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. There's nothing, a lot of work to the sport. And you can't just park them like snow machines during the winter. You have to feed them and water them all year long, so it takes a love of animals, I guess. And what type of dogs do you race particularly? We get Alaskan Huskies, okay. which are a mix of about everything. And how'd you do on the races yesterday and today? I think we maintained second in the open and, um, and uh, third in the eight dogs. The, the mushers are just thrilled with the turnout that we've had. They love the fact that we've had this great crowd that spurs them on, gives them a lot to keep them going, and the, the dogs obviously enjoy the competition. I've been trying to get a race in Massachusetts for a long time, so I was the president of the New England Club the last few years, and last year when we had talked to them, it was we were so excited to get it, you know, get the race here in Mass. And what's it take to be a musher? Uh, a lot of commitment and a lot of time and equipment. <laughs> Mostly time, time and and commitment. You know, that's a big thing. Taking and care money. of the dogs and money. <laughs> yeah, we're all broke. <laughs> all right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Your name and how, how long have you been musher? Sarah Vanderwood. I've been running dogs for about 35 years. And um, what do you think of myopia? It's a great area, uh, probably the most, uh, in the U.S., probably the most uh, populated area I've ever raced. It's good trail, nice layout, very pretty. And um, tell me, uh, for you as a woman mushing, compared to all the male mushers, a good majority, uh, how does it feel to be a woman competitor? Actually, in this sport, it's probably men and women compete equally at this sport, so you don't see too much uh, difference in the genders. Okay. It's Heather Brannon, uh -huh. and um, our kennel name is Frostbite Racing. And how long have you guys been racing? Seven years. And uh, professionally or? Uh... Professionally, yeah. We started right off in the professional classes. Okay. And what type of dogs do you race, and uh, what do you think of today in Myopia versus all the other competitors here? Um, today at Myopia, I mean, there is a lot of spectators. It's, for me, it's really good for my dogs. I do have a couple dogs that have some shyness issues. So this socialization part of this race is awesome, and it's really, um, I think it's a great experience for the mushers being able to tell our stories um, to the public. A lot of people don't know exactly what goes on at a race, and they're learning a lot by us being here and them, you know, coming to support us. And for you as a sport, uh, as a woman being a musher, how is it uh, competitively with uh, males? Oh, <laughs> well, I guess on the, on, I generally ski drawer, but on the sled, I think the women have a, an advantage. It's a weight advantage, because most women weigh less than men, so the dogs are pulling less. So definitely in the sled classes, there's an advantage to being a woman, in my opinion. Um, and then the skiing, you know, if you're a really good Nordic skier and you have really good dogs, you're gonna be really su successful um, ski drawing. 
Um, it's just, in ski drawing, I think they should separate the men and the women. They should have a men and women's division, but they don't. So, yeah, it just depends on the where you go and the level of competition. Here, um, the women are doing better than the men, but that isn't generally necessarily the case all the time. It just happens to be this race. It's a little shorter, um, shorter course, flat course. You get to uh, a course where it's longer and there's more hills. Um, the, a lot of the strong men skiers are going to do better. My name is Marla Vivi Brodsky, and I've been mushing since 2007. See, I did it on 2007. I went out to Alaska, and I handled for Bruce Linton on his uh, rookie run in Iditarod, and went down to his kennel, No Limits Kennel, down in uh, Kisilov, and got to uh, go out on training runs and meet the dogs. And then I went back to Alaska for a month. Hi, I'm being interviewed right now. You could take that off. This is my daughter, Ruby. <laughs> she's six, and uh, she's my little junior musher. And, and I just want to say, in 2008, I um, worked the start to the finish of I Did a Rod with Ali Zirkel, and um, that's who I handled for Apprentice with for um, a year and a half. And I brought back one of her retired I Did a Rod dogs, Betty. And uh, she is the mama of my team, along with Bear, who's the papa. Um, and myopia race is a really special race because it has its own promoter and he does an awesome job and there's all these people coming around wanting to say hi and pet the dogs and then New England Sled Dog Club runs the actual race part and uh, they of course do an awesome job, been around for years. So it's a nice combination having uh, the professional race organization with a professional promoter. It really makes this a whole family fun weekend event. Um, with vendors and uh, nice accommodations. <laughs> uh, martial arts is always is also an equalizer of the sexes. It really doesn't matter yeah. your size or your um, your sex. Yeah. So uh, in mushing, it really truly is about the dogs first, and then what kind of musher you are. And um, a lot of people think that women, because they have such a personal touch with their dogs and. If they're smaller, you know, you're less weight on the sled. Like, look at Lance Mackey. He's a little guy. He flies. Um, so it really doesn't matter. I feel there is a there is mutual respect. The people I trained with, I trained with female mushers. They really, um, they don't look at themselves as male or female. They look at themselves as a musher. What's your name and how long have you been racing? I'm Diane Stewart, also known as Lily's mother. I've been racing. I've been skiing with the dogs for three or four years. So my daughter mushes or drives a four dog team and I ski with them. And uh, what type of dogs do you raise? And, um, yeah. Pops is mostly German short hair pointer with a little bit of husky. And she was bred by Heather Brannon for ski joring as opposed to just straight being a sled dog. So she's strong and she likes to run and she usually runs just by herself pulling me on skis. So she's a good leader, and she's fairly attached to me. I can see. And she gets a little bit, if other dogs come around and want to smell me or something, she doesn't like it. She pushes them, right, pushes them. Yes, you do. And what do you think of myopia and uh, today, the people? And it's spectacular, and I think the people who are running the race and the people who are donating their land are so incredibly generous to share the land with all of us here.